do we have a class politics? It's an interesting question. So what is a class politics? The idea of a class politics, more or less, is that certain classes of society operate together electorally in order to get their, in order to pass whatever agenda that they see fit. From a Marxist perspective, there are three basic classes. There is the proletariat, or what we understand as the working class. We have the petty bourgeoisie, which are typically kind of the merchants, the traders, some of the white collar, the, the managerial classes. And then we have the bourgeois who are at the top, who are considered the capitalist class. So in theory, if we had a class politics, we would have different seg segments of society voting towards the interest, towards those particular class interests. Now, does that happen? Well, it doesn't happen in the United States. One of the things that I find interesting about studying politics in terms of capitalism is that one of the many things that politicians do is they seek to divide us from uniting along our class lines. The truth is I actually have much more in common with someone who makes my uh, same salary or lives in my same situation who's Republican than I do from a rich Democratic donor. However, I tend to identify with the Democratic Party during primaries and sometimes during general elections because in theory, they're advocating for things that are closer to me. But if I was thinking about this from a specifically a class interested perspective, I would actually not align with the rich with the Democratic the rich Democratic donor. I would align with someone who's a Republican who is more in my class status, who is more in my class status than the rich Democratic donor. And again, those are extreme examples, but you get the idea. There are actually some really great examples of why we don't have a class, a, a class politics. In the most recent election, uh, Florida swung for Trump by huge margins. I think it was like 60% or something. It was very, very high. But at this, and, and the Republican agenda, and voted in lots of Republicans. On the other hand, there was a state referendum about the $15 minimum wage, which was, over, which was approved, I think, by like 53 or 54%. Not overwhelmingly, but much, but it approved at a much higher rate than Democrats who were in theory in favor of $15 minimum wage were approved, which was closer to 30%. This shows that there is a difference between the class interest, which is the higher wages, and the political interest, or the partisan interest, which is the Republican-Democrat divide. There are plenty of other examples like this where ballot initiatives are put forward in red states and Republican politicians are elected at the same time that these blue initiatives or le more left-wing or worker-friendly or proletariat initiatives are also passed into law. The reason that this occurs is because politicians spend a lot of time dividing us on a variety of issues. One of the most prominent issues to divide us on is, uh, is religion, region of the country. So, sorry, some of the most uh, prevalent political fault lines are where you live, how you live, right? So think about people who live in cities versus versus rural communities. Some of it is, is socio-political. There are also racial issues. There's a lot of way, uh, and religion, of course, is, is a favorite for certain politicians who use religion as a dividing line in order to stop people from uniting on other bases. The truth is we do not have a class politics in America, but the other half of that truth is we need a class politics in America. If you look at the way that the country has been functioning for the last 30 or 40 years, more and more money has gone to the rich or the richest people, the richest corporations. The rich, the capitalist class actually do have a class politics because at the end of the day, both Republicans, rich Republicans and rich Democrats don't actually want things like $15 minimum wage, Medicare for all, Social Security for all, nationalization of health care, unions for all, the PRO Act, things like that. So there's lots of fighting there's lots of unifying on the capitalist class between the two parties, but they use that unity to divide the rest of us, which, which hampers our ability as people in the proletariat and the petty bourgeoisie to unite and to fight for more of the pie that the capitalists have been taking from us in the last 30 or 40 years. But really, this is the purpose of capitalism. It is always to concentrate that wealth 
is to take that wealth from the, the proletarians and the petty bourgeoisie and to concentrate in the capitalist hands. That being said, building a class politics is going to be exceedingly difficult because many people find that the fault lines that we are often divided on are actually very important to them. And I'm not saying they shouldn't be. Things like racial issues, your tax credits, uh, the types of ways that you live and regulations that affect uh, whether drugs should be legalized, all these things are important. But the truth is not many of them, if any of them, are actually class-based. In order to really improve our lives as proletarians and pretty bourgeoisie, we need to unite with each other, not against each other, and fight the capitalists in both parties. And really, we need to do away with a two-party system and create, and create a multi-party system so that more ideas and more variety of ideas can get passed. But the truth is, that's not going to happen in the United States for a number of reasons that I'm not going to get into right now. But at the end of the day, the only way that we claw back everything that's been taken from us in the last 40 years is to create a class politics. And we can't do that until there's real organization on the ground. And that's going to involve labor, it's going to involve unions, and it's going to involve local organizers creating movements that are class-based. So that people realize that it is more important for them to vote for their own material self-interest than it is for some other issue that may affect them. Again, this is not to diminish the importance of those other issues, but to keep in mind that in order to substantially change our quality of life, in order to make it so that we survive climate change, so that we have the resources to live happy, full lives, the only way we do that is by working together as classes and taking that money from the capitalist class.